Hi, my name is John Halbert. I'm making this documentary to tell you the story of three men and a job. Most of you will have heard of the first man, many of you will have heard of the second man, but almost none of you will have heard of the third man. This is a story about how the third man applied for a job with the first man and how the second man blocked him from getting it. But first I want to tell you a little bit about the city where this all takes place. It's a very famous and important American city. There are lots of rich and famous people who live here. It has an extensive public transportation system, including a subway. Some of the most famous museums in the world are in this city. It sits on a major river and it borders two states. But there's one thing that every other large American city has that this city does not have, and that is skyscrapers. There are two buildings which are larger than every other building, and by law, nothing can be taller than one of those buildings. Some people would say that that building is the most important building in this city, and therefore, the world. Other people would say that the most important building in this city, and therefore the world, is a house. Yes, I am standing in front of the White House, and I'm in Washington, D.C. I'm taking you through this little exercise because sometimes the perspective from inside Washington is very different from outside Washington. That's called being inside the Beltway. Today, I'm going to take you inside the Beltway. The story I'm going to tell you involves a Democrat, a Republican, and another Republican. The Democrat is Bill Clinton. And regardless of what you've heard of him, put that opinion aside because you probably think the opposite of the next person, which is the Republican Jesse Helms. The third person is a Republican that, if you live in Massachusetts, you've probably heard of, but outside of that, you probably haven't. His name is William Weld. He was the governor of Massachusetts from 19, in 1997. William Weld was a classic establishment Yankee Republican. He's old school, fiscally conservative and socially liberal. His family is one of those old families that goes back to way back when. The first person in his family to attend Harvard went there in 1650. You get the picture. Jesse Helms was an old school Republican as well, but he was an old school Republican from the South and he didn't like William Weld. Like most career politicians, William Weld had his eyes set on higher office. As governor, the only higher offices available to him were senator and president. He ran against John Kerry for senator but lost. Unfortunately for him, the only person to run for office from, as governor of Massachusetts before him was Michael Dukakis, who lost. In 1997, Clinton nominated Weld to be ambassador to Mexico. Jesse Helms then blocked the nomination. This raises a couple of questions. First, why would a Democrat nominate a Republican to an important post like ambassador to Mexico? Second, why would the Republican accept it? Third, why would another Republican block the first Republican from getting the job? The answers are fairly simple. As governor, well, did not have any foreign policy experience. Being ambassador to Mexico would give him foreign policy experience. There is precedent for an old school establishment Yankee Republican moving to the Southwest, serving as diplomat to a large country, and then being elected president. That person would be George H.W. Bush, who was born and raised in Connecticut, moved to Texas, served as our head diplomat to China, and then was elected president in 88. Clinton and Weld, of course, knew this. Clinton, however, was betting that even if he made Weld ambassador to Mexico, he wouldn't eventually become president. Clinton's goal was just to get Weld out of the governorship of Massachusetts. Clinton won that gamble when Weld resigned. Now, Jesse Helms made the same calculation. Jesse Helms, however, did not want Weld to be president because Weld was a moderate Republican, Jesse Helms was a very conservative Republican. So that's why Jesse Helms ended up blocking Weld from being ambassador to Mexico, even though they were both Republicans. Jesse Helms had made an enemy of William Weld, but he didn't care. All he wanted was to make sure that William Weld did not become ambassador to Mexico. In that respect, he succeeded. William Weld resigned as governor of Massachusetts to fight for his nomination. However, once he had resigned, 
Clinton's goal had been accomplished because Weld was no longer governor of Massachusetts. Clinton then did not have any reason to push for the nomination and the nomination was ultimately withdrawn. So Weld got what he apparently wanted, which was to resign as governor of Massachusetts. Clinton got what he wanted, which was to get governor Weld out of the governor's office of Massachusetts. And Jesse Helms got what he wanted, which was to block Weld. Weld tried to, for higher office several times after that. He ran for governor of New York and failed. He ran for president on the libertarian ticket in 2016 as the vice presidential candidate, but failed. In 2020, he's running for president against Donald Trump. Odds are, as a friend of mine once said, slim to none and slim is out of town. Politicians have a well-earned reputation for having a dysfunctional relationship with the truth. That's generally true, but the moral of this story is that politicians are honest with themselves because they know what they want. Each of these three men knew two things. They knew what they wanted and they knew what the others wanted. They all knew that William Weld wanted to be ambassador to Mexico because he wanted to become president. They all knew that Bill Clinton wanted Weld out of the governor's office of Massachusetts. And they all knew that Jesse Helms wanted to block William Weld from having any foreign policy experience. Bill Clinton got what he wanted. William Weld resigned from the governor's office of Massachusetts. Jesse Helms got what he wanted. He blocked William Weld from being ambassador to Mexico and getting any foreign policy experience. Whether or not William Weld got what he wanted is a question that only he can answer. And me, I'm just here for the view.